everyone, this is Elliot Serrano and Jose Melendez coming to you from Dreamland Comics in Schaumburg, Illinois. Thank you for joining us here on CCW TV. Uh, I had a little bit of a break uh, while I was... A little bit of a break. <laughs> while I was away, went on my long uh, plan for a vacation. <laughs> I went to Patty. <laughs> where the food is great and the women are impossibly gorgeous. Can I tell you something? I got on the train, the metro, they call it, in Paris, to go from place to place. And you get on during rush hour. You see all the women, you know, dressed to go to work and such. It, my God, they are gorgeous. Just, just gorgeous. And the men... Because they're all, you know, primped up for their, you know, for work too. Just impossibly handsome. Just made me sick. Made me sick to see it. Oh, it's gorgeous men and women. And London, not not that bad either. I mean, women in London were pretty hot too. So I don't mean they come off on a seeming somewhat uh, shallow and sexist, but it was, it was something to see. <laughs> in my, how were, how did you fare in my absence? Not very good, actually. It's not, probably like the best week I've ever had. You know, I, I, probably in the last two years. You, uh, a lot of really cool stuff happened while I was gone. I mean, first, um, yeah, while well, videos were still being posted, and uh, yeah. the times that I could check in, our numbers were about as high as I've ever seen. I mean, it seemed like, bam. Yeah, it was one of those things where <clears throat> we didn't have. You only gave me a week's worth of stuff, but we actually were taking a two-week break because yeah. when you came, you were coming back after a Sunday, so we couldn't tape. So I was trying to get them up like every two or three days, but the numbers like in one day I would pull one up, and then twelve hours later it'd be like four hundred hits. Yeah. I was like, Oh God, it's <laughs> killing me. And, it was, and the the three hundred rule went out the window. Yeah. The rule, so it was it was something that I kind of felt that I needed to put them up there oh, because yeah. we already hit that number, but. Yeah, here we are complaining that we're getting more views. Well, it's because, you know, we know that people... And then, uh, of course, uh, a lot of the... A lot of the um, spillover went over to the blog, and I saw... The numbers on... Yeah. Uh, the numbers on the blog took off really well. We had a, You had a lot of really cool conversations going on there. Um, I actually, for the... just Like, I had a total of four hours internet access a whole week. I was in Europe. I bought Wi-Fi at my hotel for like four hours worth, and I peeked in on the blog and I was reading um, all the comments that were going on there and um, some of the you know conversations and questions. And holy, holy cannoli! Uh, Chip Mosier from Boom Studios is uh, commenting on on things and and talking to the readers, uh, talking to the CCW yeah, readers. That's and very cool. That was pretty cool, uh, which goes to show that, uh, you know, this show is kind of getting noticed. I'm kind of pleased by and that. And we just had our 500th subscriber last week, too. 500th. We, cr we crack five. I think I should go away more often because it seems like whenever I'm nowhere to be found, um, things just take off. Well, know? trust me, in that week that you were gone, I was trying to find a replacement, but then... <laughs> But I can't find a, I can't find another sucker that has an actual camera who yeah. will, who actually tape these and edit yeah. them themselves. Yeah. Well, I mean, I had fun putting up the throwing up the videos and then writing little descriptions. But as far as all the other stuff, though, I'm not doing that. <laughs> okay. It is kind of a pain in the ass. Yeah. So. So anyway, we are back and uh, back, uh, ready to jump into things. I do want to talk a couple things, a little more about my trip going away. Uh, but I know you guys have been wanting uh, to hear from us. You've been asking for our opinions, asking us to talk about different books. So let's jump right into one. I don't want to... I, I want to talk about a book that you guys actually have been... Um, that you, we always get asked to talk about it, um, which is essentially um, Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, there's almost always... On the blog or on the boards, a question, hey, did you guys read Amazing Spider-Man? What did you think about it? I have been reading Amazing Spider-Man um, since 600 came out. I actually bought like six or seven issues in a row, which is the longest stretch 
of Amazing Spider-Man comics that I've probably bought in 15 years. But then when the Black Cat story was, uh, I was like, oh, it was pretty terrible. And then they brought that Kane back from the Clone Saga, and yeah. I just that's when I stopped buying it again. <laughs> and then actually, Mark Wade's coming back on with Marcos Martin to do two issues in January, and I'd written on a blog that I, you know this is when I'll come back. But I forgot that this issue was coming out with Joe Kelly writing the issue with Deadpool. With Deadpool, and I'm a huge fan of the old Joe. Joe Kelly Deadpool series that he did with Ed McGuinness back in the day. Well, this is uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 611, and yes, Joe Kelly is back on Deadpool with art chores by... Eric Canetti. Eric Canetti. Um, I have this feeling that I know Eric Canetti's Eric work Canetti, from somewhere. Eric uh, Canetti, he did the End League. There it the is. The Dark Horse. There he it did is. like the... Well, he didn't do the last issue, but he did the five issues. Uh, he... Did some stuff from Verotic back in the day. Okay. Uh, Glenn Danzig's company. Okay. He was actually Peter Chung's assistant from Yan Flux. Oh, okay. He does have a very indie look to his work. Mm, I like his stuff a lot. Um, so, uh, with this issue, we have, you know, a... It's, it's a Deadpool versus Deadpool... Teaming up with Deadpool versus Spider Man. Mm -hmm. And Joe Kelly, I don't know if he has written, when's the last time he's written Deadpool <laughs> since before this? Probably, it's been years. It's been years? It seemed like he had a lot of Deadpool angst built up in him mm -hmm. that he finally got to let out in this book. Because, uh. And it's. Okay. Reading this issue, is I really like the Deadpool series now. It's probably one of my favorite series. Daniel Way is doing a great job. He's doing a great job. It, yeah. But reading this, I, it's such a different comic now. Because this, this, this issue was written how, how it used to be written. The old, yes. With the old jokes and the captions and stuff. And it really, Daniel Way really has made a Deadpool comic his own. He's right. gotten away. But this just reads like a classic issue. And it's not a bad thing that it reads like an old issue. Right. It just reminded me how... Of the writing style and how different Deadpool is now. And I remember, uh, yes, Joe Kelly had... I remember back in the day when I would read Joe Kelly's books and, and he was, you know, doing the X books and, and Deadpool. And, and he, I know he dabbled in um, Spider-Man from time to time. Um, I don't remember his, his writing being this dense. Uh, I mean, he crams he a does. lot of dialogue into this issue, and we were talking. Um, the, the, we were talking about that kind of stream of consciousness writing that, in some cases, we like, in some cases that we didn't like. Mm -hmm. Kill Audio, mm -hmm. sorry, Boom Studios didn't care for it. Sugar Shock, Joss Whedon doing it, loved it. This was a lot like that, mm -hmm. to me at least. And, uh, of course, with uh, Kennedy's artwork giving it a very indie feel, this, this book felt like, like Spider-Man done indie style. Um, there's a lot going on here with, the, with Deadpool's internal monologue again. And, and, I, well, and, and this issue is pretty much a one and done. Yeah. So I think Joe Kelly's like, I get to write Deadpool. I'm going to write a lot. I'm going to write a lot of so. Deadpool. It this really felt more like Spider-Man guest starring in his own book. Because Deadpool kind of, he starts the book off, mm -hmm. and uh, all the stuff that's going on, it's being told more or less from um, Deadpool's point of view. You, for a couple pages, you get a little bit of Peter Parker, but it's mostly Deadpool. And the number of jokes that are thrown in here are, are pretty much, get, you know, laugh out loud. You get into the Yo Mama fight between Deadpool <laughs> and Spider-Man, which uh, made me think of... of um, the uh, robot chicken Star Wars, mm -hmm. when uh, Luke Skywalker Logan. and the Emperor had a Yo Mama fight. Uh, you get into all these little jokes where Spider-Man tells Deadpool, people have always considered you kind of a, uh, uh, a knockoff of me anyway. This then, was... you, then you have a couple of Jeff Johns jokes. Yeah, there, oh, see, which, <laughs> but, but we're actually pretty funny because, yes. it, you know, it's not... And there's there's a Blackest Night joke. There's in here a Blackest too. Night and joke it, in it, there, and they're not like in his joke. Kelly not making fun of DC. It's just, no, it's just incorporating it in, like respectful jokes, and that yeah. actually worked. Giving him a shout out, yes, yeah. which was re actually really cool. 
I, I did a double take there when I saw the black when I read that Blackest Night joke. Mm-hmm. And there's this running uh, gag in here too that starts way in the very beginning, where the little editorial box, which you don't even see anymore in comics, right. kind of gets um, hijacked, and you picture that editorial box uh, with a different person each time, like someone else is talking in there. Mm-hmm. So this, you know, for for being what it is. Um, a one-shot, and again, if you haven't been reading Spider-Man, you can pick this book up and yeah, kind of like read it. Right. Um, it was really, it was fun. My only my only drawback, my only criticism, and this is me personally, I didn't care for Kennedy's artwork. I yeah, didn't, you know what? He's, and, his artwork has is better, but it looks like they just went right from the pencils and didn't have any ink it. This needs to be tighter. It's, yes, that, that would be it, yes. Yeah. The, the, the... I don't know if he did. Maybe he did it straight from pencils, or I think they colored the pencils, or he um, digitally inked it. And um, but anyway, yeah, it does need to. It needs to be tightened up quite and a bit. Mind you, his Spider-Man looks really cool. In mm-hmm. fact, Spider-Man. I've always thought that Kennedy's interpretation of Spider-Man is kind of how he should look. I mean, you really see the contours of Peter Parker's head, the ears, his jawline. Through the mask, it's mm-hmm. really more of a, a of a realistic interpretation. So yeah, the, the only issue I had was, yeah, it wasn't that tight. And if like you look at this splash page here, um, you know, there's a very rough, unfinished look to it, which, which is with the big splash page isn't a big deal. It's when you get into those uh, into those panels that are a little more um, congested with a lot of mm-hmm. panels and transitions. Sometimes the artwork's a little hard to follow. And the coloring job, you know, I mean, the, the colorists kept it as basic as they could just so you could tell who's Deadpool, who's Spider-Man, and what's going on. Mm-hmm. So if, if there's any criticism, that would be it. And it's not even a, a major criticism. I don't think it detracts entirely from the book. You're still going to enjoy it. So, um, yeah, this is one of the high points for... And um, pretty a, nice... Scotty Young covers. Oh yeah, too. great Scotty cover Young cover. Funny. <laughs> yeah, it is fun. So, um, the thing about Spider-Man, you know, I know Joe Casada wanted to put Spider-Man back on the map as one of the top-selling uh, Marvel titles, and Spider-Man cracks a top ten consistently. No, top twenty-five. Top twenty-five. Yeah, I thought it was in the top ten last time. No, no. it could have maybe one issue, but all, I mean, three issues ship in a month, and all, yeah. almost all three issues are in the top twenty-five. Yeah, and they'll usually Most. be one right after the other. Yeah, I think kind of that is probably while I understand the idea behind it, I think that's what hurts the book: the fact that it's coming out so friggin' much. It's not. Know? It's not. Well, here's the problem that I have with Amazing Spider-Man: if if Dan Slott and Mark Wade aren't writing it, I don't enjoy it at all. I try reading it, but it's just they're not enjoyable stories. The, the voices that they have working on the books aren't consistent. I mean, the, mm-hmm. it seems like when they when the when the book changes creative teams, it's more of a jolt than you would expect. You know, and the other reason that Spider-Man was sh- is shipping three times a month is because there were, there aren't any other. Yeah, there are no books. other books. But right. now they are because now yes. they launched what was Spider-Man again, right. and there are other Spider-Man books coming right. out there. So. It's getting kind of the point of why you're still doing three issues a month. Right. I think they're trying to run up to uh, the 700 issue. Yeah, well, that was the, the big thing when they started doing it weekly last year. Like, oh, they just want to get the 600 really quick. Right. Yeah. Don't mean to end on a down note. It was a good book, and uh, Spider-Man, um, they've accomplished what they've wanted to do with Spider-Man, which is make him um, make him a great character, you know, do a great job with the book yeah. and put some unique voices If we had another it. 20 minutes, though, I'd sit here and complain about everything I think is wrong with Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there's a lot wrong going on with Spider-Man. It's actually been discussed on the boards. Yeah. Uh, but we'll get into that uh, some other time. So, let's end this segment there. When we come back, we will jump into the DC Universe and uh, the event that they just can't seem to do wrong by. We'll see you then.